pasture, put them in the pen, work them up to Sunday, do it all again. Race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. He said you're watching it. So if he said that, that's true because only world champions know about that. We got a lot of stuff going on today. We've got some some good odd news. Everybody likes the odd news. We're gonna talk about that. We got some good stuff for you. We got some beavers on the loose, some birds on the loose, dogs saving their owners. Donkey Wranglers, there's all, all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, Yellowstone fans, Forey Smith is back with us again. We're going to see what he's been up to. Uh, we caught up with him last, I believe, in about when season two started. So things have changed for him. Things changed for the show. So there's a lot of stuff going on. We're going to check out uh, William Joyner, an author. He writes books. That's what authors do. They write books. He wrote a bunch of them. We're going to talk to him about those. He's even got some Western books. If you like that. Also in studio today, hanging out in here, is Holly with Ranahan. She's here. Thanks for having me. What do you think about being downtown? It's a long it's way from home. Different. <laughs> and there's traffic and red lights and a lot of people. And yeah. I haven't seen any horse trailers since I got down here. And I'm a little confused. I'm out of my element down here. You gotta go across town to Fort Worth. <laughs> Before you, see any, before you see any horse trailers. Right. Any horse trailers at all. Speaking of horses, the horses are about to run. Ponies are about to get going here in North Texas. Check it out. Get your tickets and go watch this. Join us for exciting live racing all season long, where your next experience could be a winning one. Tickets are on sale now for the thoroughbred racing season. Right there down on the inside, coming to the wire. With tickets starting at just $5, we're sure to be your best bet for a good time at a great price. Closing on the outside, grabs the lead here. It's going to draw clear. The horses are ready. Are you? Visit LoneStarPark.com slash tickets to make your plans today. Go watch the ponies run. Check them out. Go put just a few dollars. All you get a couple, couple bucks. Watch them run. Get out there and do, do something now that you're allowed to do that again, right? And get out and go somewhere. You can go places, can't you? Yeah, you can. Some places. <laughs> Some places. Well, pe uh, people get on me. They ask me about this because we're global. People watch from everywhere. And so they ask. They, when, as soon as Texas opened up, and they're like, hey, the mask mandate's gone. And there was so many people from around the world, even England, Ireland, everybody's asking, what's going on in Texas? Are y'all crazy? What happened? Yeah, we're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, like, I, I just find myself, look, the deal is, all it is is... The government's not telling you what to do. Right. If you're a business owner, you own a business, just like the, the way I look at it is this. When you go to a store, it says no shirt, no shoes, no service. Right. You got to wear a shirt. You got to wear shoes to go in the store. So if that store decides, hey, cover your face when you come in, mm -hmm. either cover your face or go to a different store. Right. That's it. Don't get on Facebook and get your phone <laughs> out and go, look at me. I'm going, <laughs> I'm America. I can do what I want. No, don't be an idiot. Just Go shop somewhere else. I, on the way here, we stopped by a leather store, and it's a very well-known leather store. And I was actually surprised because it's, you know, a Western store mm -hmm. that we had to put a mask on to go in there. But you know what? I didn't complain. I didn't say anything about it. I put my mask on, and mm -hmm. I walked in, and I did my shopping, <laughs> and walked out and took the mask off. That's it. Right. Simple. It's easy as that. Yeah. No big deal. Didn't it? Didn't you? Didn't cut your arm off? You no, didn't, I didn't cry. No, yeah, nothing happened. No. You didn't get arrested. No, no, not this time. Not this time. That's Dallas, though. <laughs> <laughs> that happens right here. Let's do this. Let's take a break and let's come back and let's talk to the man from Yellowstone, Forey Smith. His hands, I'll say that. Can you toss me a water, babe? Thank you, sugar. Damn. Two dances. 
Here I'm hauling them to the arena, saddling their horses, sitting in the bleachers watching them. Now I'm the damn buckle bunny. That's a lot of woman you got there. She's gonna want more than you can offer living in a bunkhouse. Rodeo was supposed to be my way out of the bunkhouse. <laughs> Rodeo's as bad on relationships as cowboy. Can't be married to two things at the same time, Jimmy. That right there is the man, the myth, the legend, Forey Smith. Forey, are you with us? <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but, well, you know, a, a lot of a lot of actors play cowboys, but then it's sometimes you get cowboys to play cowboys, and that and that right there is Forey Smith, Lloyd on Yellowstone. So, what are you up yeah, to today? Thank you. I got a little. <laughs> Taylor was telling me about what he's going to do with me on in season four. And I just laughed at him. I said, oh, hell, you already made me a buckle bunny. You can't do much worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, last time we visited with you, I guess, was right when season two was kicking off. And uh, yeah. you, you had a you had a pretty good part there. But as things change, you become more, you know, more of a focus on the show. So how has things kind of changed for you, you know, after – Season three's wrapped up. Season four is getting ready to come up. So how has things changed, you know, in your world um, moving on up in season three? Um, well, season four, uh, there you uh, Kind of the subplots about Lloyd. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that was a whole different experience with the COVID and having to stay in the bubble never getting around to other people and stuff. I never really, it took me a couple of weeks to lose old Lloyd when I got home, <laughs> maybe longer than that. <laughs> um, so it, that, that's one change, you know, uh, the more you work and the, the, um, and the more you are that character, uh, the harder it is to shed him and, and uh, think like for you or you're like yourself um, and you know you got well Heath Ledger and you know you go on down the list people that have had trouble getting away from their characters yeah yeah you get you get set in, you know set in there and then you gotta kind of decompress and go back and go, wait a minute that's just that's just the TV I got I get back to myself yeah I can't get away with that <laughs> no well now the you know, the, the bunkhouse is becoming more, you know, more and more in the show and it's starting to fill up. So, you know, what, what do you think that has to do with the show? Well, um, the bunkhouse has always been uh, kind of the comic relief of the show. And uh, it's always been a favorite, people's favorites. Um, and it's, uh, it's, Hard to answer that without giving anything away for season four. <laughs> all, right. all right, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want, I want. Oh, no, I'm in trouble. I'd be in trouble. But oh uh, yeah, there's some changes coming in the bunkhouse. Uh oh. That's Even like... more so than already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. It it, so. it had a few changes in season three. Yeah, it kind of mixing it up a little bit in there. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I, that's what I told everybody. Um, and the promos before season three was like, well, after season three, every cowboy in the world's going to want to move into the Yellowstone bunkhouse. Oh, <laughs> and uh, now they know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now in, in, you know, in the last season, we had a little bit more, a little more rodeo action. You know, we had Jimmy with the, with the bronc ride and stuff. So did you have any, any influence on that in the season as far as adding and the bronc riding in the show? Well, um, my heritage and my history, Taylor, you know, kind of played on that. And uh, he uh, he asked me about the dialogue and and uh, what we'd do. And we didn't do it quite like I would have had done it. But uh, I'm not as hep on the... Uh, time constraints and the budget and everything as Taylor is and 
and uh, we, you know, yeah, he used some of my dialogue and, um, you know, kind of picked my brain about that stuff. Now, I heard that uh, you're starting to use your own horses now. No. No? No. I have horses here at home that uh, I use on movies, but uh, no, um, I'm not not on that show yet. Anyway, okay. Um, I like uh, I don't have a buckskin anymore, and I um, people probably don't realize that um, I ride a buckskin because of Matt Dillon. I like Matt Dillon. I've worked with James Arnez a few different times, and he's just a straight up gentleman, good man, and uh, so I. I Taylor asked me what I wanted to ride on the show. I told him I wanted to ride a buckskin. And um, and then uh, you won't find me wearing black gloves out here on a day like today, but I wear black gloves on the show in honor of the Virginian. I, okay. I really like the Virginian. I liked a lot of his, uh, I used some of his stuff um, in, in interviews, uh, I did an interview on the Cowboy Channel at the National Finals in Fort Worth, and oh, I see if I can say it right. I, I got it right that day. Uh, if you see something that's wrong, and you don't do something about it, then you're part of it. Right. And and that that comes from uh, James Dury, the Virginian, and uh, so. I'm going to continue riding the buckskin. Uh, uh, that little Cisco horse, of Jake Reams, is a really nice horse and it's really coming along. I don't see any reason in changing, but um, I have special horses that I use on the movies. Then I have, I've got uh, Ten Head here at the house, and I've got two of them. Nobody straddled them but me, and my, my well, my son rode the one too. But, they're my horses. I pick up on them. I catch wild cattle on them. I'm getting some age on them, the old gray mare. She's, but uh, and then I've got um, some others that I'll use on movies. But you never know what they might ask you to do on a horse, you know. Right. And, uh, um, and once you rent them out, there's there's their horse. And uh, if they want you to jump them off a cliff, that's what you got to do. So. I'm not going to do that with some of mine. Yeah. Now I know a lot of uh, a lot of us been in the war, in the uh, in the news about some of these Yellowstone uh, spinoffs. There's a couple of them. They're they're talking about something going on at the four sixes, and they're talking about a uh, like a prequel to Yellowstone. So as as Taylor mentioned, uh, to working with you on any of that, rather either uh, being in it or, or consulting for the for the cowboy stuff in those shows. Not as of yet, he hasn't. No, um, uh, we did set up the prequel in season four. Oh, I don't know if I should have said that. <laughs> 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 but uh, and then and and the four six is. Uh, I guess it's been on the it, social media and everything that uh, Jimmy and. Walker going to the four sixes. So, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't do that. I have a social media coordinator. She takes care of my social media stuff for me. Uh, I don't. I don't know nothing about it. I, um. So I just show up and do my job. Yeah. Cowboy shit. So, uh, <laughs> that's that's all. You, that's all you can do. Now we had. Uh, you know, we had a couple of uh, fans submitted questions for you, kind of about the show. So let me uh, let me turn this over to Holly. She's got a couple of questions that were submitted by Yellowstone Yellowstone fans of uh -huh. Lloyd. Thank you, Yellowstone fans. <laughs> the first question for you is: Will we get any throwback scenes of a young Lloyd? Well, um, <laughs> no. Not that, not that I know of right now. Um, we're hoping so. 
You know, my son's always asking me, well, Dad, do you read scripts yet? What, what do I have on them? Um, Taylor, Taylor likes my son, and uh, so we're hoping so, yeah. Um, and, and after season four, what he did to me in season four, I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't some more flashbacks. All right. Great. At some point, will the backstory show how your character Lloyd become a Brandon man? Well, we've been asked that for years, and uh, Taylor Sheridan's the only one that knows. Um, he has he hasn't told me, shared that with me, but uh, we've talked about several different scenarios, so it is on his mind. Fair enough. Can't wait. To, can't wait for that. <laughs> me neither. I'm kind of anxious <laughs> too. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, four. It's established in season four that I've been there for 35 years and uh, stuff. So I think he might be kind of progressing towards that. So may maybe sneaking into that coming up, coming up, maybe season five, we'll we'll get the we'll get the lowdown on it. Now, uh, yeah. now Taylor brings some folks out because we do uh, we do some media stuff for the Carity Foundation here in Fort Worth, and they have the uh, the cutting every year is is there any chance oh, yeah. are you coming down and doing some cutting no i haven't been asked to yet um i haven't been on a cutting horse since uh well i used to ride colts for the carters in crockett texas and uh i got to turn back for them some uh, but uh no, I haven't. I'm coming out uh, for the Cowboys and Cowboys Gala in Dallas at Gillies on the 24th. I know that. Okay. Um, they got me hopping here for the next couple months. I, you know, it's hard to say no to these fans. They don't watch. I don't have. We don't have a job. Right. Uh, and uh, let's see. I'm clear this weekend, and then next weekend I go to speak to the kids on the res Navajo reservation. And, uh, and then the next weekend after that, the 17th, I'm doing a charity for the firemen here in uh, New Mexico. And then I go to the Cowboys and Cowboys Gala and then I've been lucky enough to get to, uh, Mike Smith and Bob Baffert are going to take me to the uh, Kentucky Derby. Well, that'll wow. be good. And then after, after that, they're flying me to Medora or Dickinson, North Dakota, and I have to drive to Medora for the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. I'm a guest speaker there. And then uh, the... Wednesday, I think, or Thursday after that, I go to Watford City to Cattleman's Banquet, North Dakota. And then uh, I'm a, my kind of a host or I don't know what at the Mile City Bucking Horse Sale. All right. So there's going to be plenty plenty opportunity for these Yellowstone fans across the U.S. to, to run into you somewhere coming up the next somewhere. few months. That's going to be fun. I I went to the Miles City Bucking Horse Sale when I lived in Montana four or five years in a row. And uh, I got a lot of cool memories to share with people from up there. <laughs> and then some not so, you know. I, <laughs> but uh, the first, um, <laughs> first time I ever seen a stripper was at the Miles City Bucking Horse Sale. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're going to see up there. No, you don't. You sure don't. Oh. It caught my guys in high school. It caught me by surprise. <laughs> and, Whoa, what's that girl doing up there? <laughs> She's stripping. Oh. Working her way through college. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. oh man. All right, Forey. Well, man, we got it. we're running up on the clock. They're looking at me. So we appreciate you visiting with oh. us again and, and letting you know what you got going on and about – about Yellowstone, and I guess all we can do is tune in to uh, the next season and see what happens. That's right. I'm ready, too. And, uh, 
once they start showing, then we go back to work. So I get excited about when it shows. We go back to work in July. So. All right. We'll see you then. Hey, well, thank you guys and keep up the good work and promoting the farm and ranchers. And before we leave, I want to thank all you farm and ranchers out there for feeding America. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Pepper. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yellowstone, be sure you get the, the box. The box sets are out. All three seasons are out. So you can go get those and watch it over and over. But also what we're going to talk about now is awards. Because like Forrest talking about the rodeos, you win awards. Everybody wants to win something. And I've won a few things, but I don't know about all the awards. So what I did is I brought an expert on awards. And that's Holly. Hi, Orion. how are you? Yeah. Awards is what we do. So tell us about the awards you do. We do ranch and rodeo awards. So we do ranch rodeo awards. We do rodeo awards. We've done some FFA awards. We're just all in the Western lifestyle, any type of Western lifestyle awards that, that can be needed, we can do them. We do everything from saddles and buckles on to bags and economy awards. So we are a one-stop shop for all rodeo award needs. And what I think is neat that what you do is, you know, since since rodeo started, everybody got a buckle. So everybody right. gets buckles. Everybody's got buckles. I've got a case at home just full of buckles. And you just keep getting more and more and every, you know, I'll go in there every week or so and switch one out, wear right. a different whatever. But what you do, I think that is neat is you go beyond that. So you've got buckles, you've got buckle cases, you've got purses, which I don't wear a purse, but if I did. We have du hair, hair on hide duffel bags, yes. and um, recently we put the buckles on the hair on hide duffel bags and sent them up to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and uh, they had a really nice award program up there for a facility, and we can do almost any. If you can imagine it, we can do it. And as far as people looking for your stuff where do they look for it where do they go mostly on facebook we tried to do a website and everything is so customized it didn't really work i, I talked to every customer personally myself our team we have a phenomenal team and they are all every single one of them ranch and rodeo folks so we always say we're for ranch and rodeo families by ranch and rodeo families so we're not some person that is sitting somewhere in the city and not really understanding what's going on. Every single award that leaves our facility, I inspect, I touch myself to make sure that it meets our quality standards and they're pretty high. Our quality standards are high. So we want to make sure if you worked all year long to get that award, it's going to be something nice that you're proud of. Yeah. So there you go. And you're located in Texas. I am in Texas. So you're not, you're not calling New York city no. to order something. You're right here and and like you say, you're going to look at it. You're going to check it out. You're going to personally see right. every award that goes out the door because what people don't realize is there's lots of awards. There's lots of places. But what people forget is quality. Right. Quality, quality still exists. And you can still find quality. You look for it. You find it. And that's what they do here at Renahan. Right. Right. Everything is inspected. It's – we – we come out where we're coming out with a new line of saddles. They are being tested right now. We came out with a line of saddle pads. We test them. We throw them in the mud. I had one being used for 10 months before I ever sold the first one because I want to make sure your, your name is your brand and your brand is everything. Yes. So our brand, I will stand behind our brand and everything's been tested. Everybody, everything's been bucked on and rode <laughs> on and, and had some wet blankets under it. Yeah. And, uh, we had to make sure we make sure that everything that leaves there is, is a quality item. And and that's what you have to do. You know, and, and I've got I got flack over the years for that same reason because any any advertiser that comes on here, anybody that comes or something, they you know, they'll send something, we'll test them, whatever. Mm -hmm. And if, if I don't like it, I don't use it, it's then I sorry, I'm not doing it. So I had a, a whiskey company throw out this terrible campaign against me because <laughs> they sent a bottle that was terrible. <laughs> And I sent it back. <laughs> the, the the worst thing is the world in the world is a bottle of terrible whiskey. Yeah, I'm like sorry guys, I uh, can't help you here. No, no, yep. send it back. Right. But <laughs> right. and, and that and that's what people a lot of people understand is you know you see stuff come through and you, you see everything go by, but quality still means something. And to have a quality product and get a, and if you know, if you will go 
like you say, you go ride all year in association and you win a prize, you know, from that association, you want something that's going to last. You want something nice, right. something you can use. Right. You can use it or you can put it up. Right. Because a lot of awards out there that you get, they're not meant to be used. Right. It's, it's that be that is at. a fact. And and you run into that. And and just like everywhere else, you see that. They're like, well, what? And then you'll have, I'm sure you run this all the time, with somebody coming, hey, I can go get this cheaper. Right. And I go, yeah, but yep. what are you getting? Right. Are you getting quality? Right. And someone I actually heard someone say at a meeting one time, trophy saddles aren't meant to be used. Well, ours are. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we use them. They they can be used daily. They can be used to rodeo. They can be used to ranch on. We have cutters. We have barrel saddles. We have roping saddles. And we use them. Mm -hmm. And we make sure our horses' backs aren't sore and that, uh, you know, our tree has a warranty on it. And it's a, it's a nice tree and it's a good quality tree. And we make sure it's for ranch and rodeo folks. So that's, that's what we cater to and that's what we're going to do. Yep. Because it's like anything else. If I win it, I'm going to use it. Right. Whatever. I've got, I've got uh, you know, saddles that I, I use them, mm -hmm. you know, brought halters, head stalls, whatever. Right. I use them. Right. Because that... I can't go buy all this stuff all the time. If I right. win it, hey, I'm using it. Right. <laughs> you spent all it. that money all year long <laughs> yeah. to win an award. You, you need to darn well be able to oh, use yeah. it. I want to use that sucker. So where can they find you? On, on Facebook, what do they look for? Facebook. Ranahan Customs and Awards on Facebook. We do not have a website right now. We tried that. It didn't really work because everything was so custom. Mm -hmm. So um, in, our, in our albums, all of our pricings listed there, and they can – private message the page you will talk to me i do have employees don't think i don't have employees but i, I have a little bit of a micromanaging problem and i want to make sure everyone is taken care of because mm -hmm. like i said our brand is is my yep. word is my name and i make sure you get a response and you get one in a timely manner and you're taken care of yep. and that's what they do at right hand check them out look them up on facebook It's 2021 and people are still reading books, whether it's paperback or on their Kindle online and people are still writing. There's still stuff going on. And with that in, in uh, Western books, there is a book out there called the legend of J the legend of Jake Jackson. Also the last great gunfighter and the Comanche warrior. And the guy that wrote that book is on the line with us. That's William Joyner. How you doing, William? Uh, hi, Pepper. How are you today? Oh, doing doing well. What are you, what are you up to today? Well, uh, I'm just uh, trying to stay out of trouble, which uh, uh, sometimes is uh, I have good days and sometimes I have bad days. I think I think that happens to to all of us. So. Um, Tell me a little bit about what you got, what got you interested in, in writing books? Well, actually I came, I'm uh, 74 and I really didn't start writing till about uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, and so I kind of came to it late in life. I'd, uh, I'd always uh, been in business for myself my entire life, sort of a, uh, an entrepreneur type, I guess you might say, uh, but I had uh, attracted a number of followers on Facebook and they suggested that I start writing. And honestly, I didn't think I had the patience to do that, <laughs> but uh, I, I wrote my, my first book uh, and, uh, and it was, uh, honestly, I was a little surprised at how well received it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I've written books across the, uh, uh, a, a, bride, a broad ra a range of genres, but uh, the last couple of years I've settled in on Westerns. That seems to be uh, uh, where uh, most of my folks' uh, interest lay. Yeah, so can you, can you tell us a little about the about your third book, The Legend of Jake Jackson? Uh the Legend of Jake Jackson is uh, about uh, uh, a man whose uh, family were, were killed. Uh, and all, all of my Westerns take, take place in uh, about the mid-1850s. Uh, 
and uh, uh, his parents were killed by a, a raiding party of Comanches. And he was taken as a small child, as a toddler, to uh, live with the Comanches and was raised as a Comanche. And so uh, uh, he eventually uh, uh, had to transition over to the white world, which he didn't much care for. Uh, and uh, uh, beca uh, became a famous gunfighter. But uh, he was uh, renowned in, in the book, he's renowned uh, uh, as a great uh, Comanche warrior and also uh, 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 maybe the fastest gunfighter in the Old West. Okay. All right. So you kind of you kind of grew up in the in the Western world. So it's kind of kind of what your background is. Um, you know, working with horses and things throughout your life? Uh, I did. And uh, uh, I owned horses and cattle. and uh, uh, But as a kid, I was a big fan of the old Westerns, Johnny Mac Brown, uh, John Wayne, and... Uh, I like to think that my books reflect those same values that the old westerns had that I that I watched as a kid. Okay, and then uh, you got the Blood Warrior trilogy. What can you tell me about that? Well, that's a little. Uh, uh, that's not a western, but it's it takes place in what's now currently uh, Yellowstone National Park, and. Uh, it's about uh, uh, a, a pack of timber wolves that lived during that time. And uh, there is no humans in the book. Uh, it's strictly animals and how they relate to each other. Okay. All right. And if, if, and, the, and and if, the, uh, if the folks out there watching and, and listening are, are looking for these books, where's the, uh, the best place to, to find you and to find your books? Well, my, uh, my website uh, contains all of my books, and uh, uh, I think there's probably 40 to 50 listed there that I've written. And uh, if, you, if uh, one of your listeners sees, you know, finds one that they have an interest in, they can click on the, on the link on that particular book, and it will take them to the Amazon page okay. where they can buy it if they, if they choose. Okay. All right, and uh, and we'll sure do that. We'll we'll sure uh, put the uh, website out there and share it with the folks to let them know. And and William, man, we we're getting up on the clock, but we appreciate you visiting with us and tell us a little bit about you and and your books. And uh, we wish you luck on your on your writing. Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate uh, you and and, and uh, your invitation to your show. Thank you. Thanks again. All right. Books. Read them. Go get them. Look on his website. He's got a lot of books on that website. A lot of interesting, interesting books on the site. But if movies are more your cup of tea, there's a movie out or it's coming out. It got it got held up uh, because of Corona times, like everything else. And it's about spiders. So if you're a fan of spiders, especially poisonous spiders, and you like that sort of thing, they've got a movie coming out that apparently you're going to marvel at it. So check this out. Nothing lasts forever. My sister moved out west. You're a science teacher. Your husband, he renovates houses. You're thinking about moving, but you're gonna wait until the interest rates go down. That's not my story.
is call sign Taskmaster. They're manipulated. Poisonous spiders, I expected, but it's still the same. If you fear the spiders, go check that out. But what we've got right now is everybody's favorite, the odd news. Do so you want to kick off some odd news over there? Sure. Let's talk about donkeys. <laughs> the, don the donkey whisperer. Florida Sheriff's deputy was dubbed the donkey whisperer when he wrangled an escaped donkey that fled from his owner's property and went for a run. Lieutenant Jeff Morgan responded to a call about a horse and a donkey running loose on Buckward Road in Baker. I have horses and donkeys, so I won the opportunity to get the mini donkey on a rope and walk him home, Morgan <laughs> said. Your full service sheriff's office in the joys of rural law enforcement. <laughs> the sheriff's office branded Morgan the donkey whisperer. <laughs> That happens. That happens. That happens. <laughs> you have had donkeys and they run. They, oh, like, they, they know a 10,000 ways to get out of a out of an enclosure they get out and donkeys have been escaping for years <laughs> yeah it's not gonna stop because i've got one i've got one here another donkey story in 1963 there's a, a picture there of my uncle mesquite police oh, wow. officer leading a donkey a mile and a half down the, down buckner boulevard in mesquite <laughs> <laughs> so them suckers get out you know speaking of getting out donkeys getting out when we were in colorado we went to uh cripple creek mm-hmm where the donkeys just wander the streets. Yes. And that was pretty it's, neat. It's a really neat place. That was pretty neat. We got another one. What's this story about? Beaver on the loose. Maybe Cardi B's next album. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> an entrance to Toronto's subway station was temporarily closed when a beaver wandered into the building. One of the commuters said he arrived at the Royal Oak subway Thursday and spotted what he initially thought was a groundhog. Uh, so he snapped a picture of the beaver and posted it to Twitter. Which that's what you do nowadays. If you see something, you take a picture of it and you post it on the internet. Or it right? didn't happen. Yeah, if there's no picture, it didn't happen. So you got a picture of the beaver. Uh, the transit commission closed the entrance temporarily while they <laughs> were summoned to the scene. So they come in, wrangled this beaver, and they named him Nickel, which I don't know why you would name a beaver. Uh, he was clearly, clearly afraid and stressed out to find so many people staring at him. He started slapping his tail. Which are all signs of a healthy beaver, said uh, Toronto Animal Services. It's so, always good to have a healthy beaver. Always. Always. Get your checkups. Don't forget. Uh, police warn of an aggressive rhea. And I was like, what is a rhea? Because this is, in, this is in England, in Britain. So I was like, what the heck is that? It was on the loose. And the, the police were warning people. So they're like, why? So in Britain, they warned the residents in the town to beware of multiple rhea spotted around a loose in the area. So I'm like, what is this? The rhea is a smaller cousin to the ostrich. So it's kind of like a, between an emu and an ostrich. And apparently they're wreaking havoc on the M25 in Three Rivers, England. So police told the residents, stay clear of the birds. Do not approach them. We've received reports of them attacking dogs and deer. So they told the dog owners to keep your dogs inside and be vigilant. When walking your dog. I bet they don't have cowboys there. Because you know what would have happened. Oh, yeah. 
They don't. You know, <laughs> they, they they would they would have wrangled yeah. and 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 jumped on them and uh, they would have took care of the problem. Oh yeah, they, honestly. Oh yeah, they roped them right up. They 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 don't. You know, the first time we went to England, I I went took it easy, wore a baseball cap and some shirt, t shirts whatever, so I could blend in. They went, I wore I wore my hat. And you'd be surprised how many people think you're from Texas because you got a hat on. Only people in Texas wear hats. Well, they, well, yeah. I'm like, well, you're right. <laughs> so that that was interesting. I wore, wore to England, wore to Ireland. I left it in Ireland at the whiskey museum. My hat got left there because they kept giving me such a hard time about it. The tour guides, they wanted it, so I just gave it. We to should them. go get it back. Yeah, that's a good place. The, the whiskey museum the whiskey in museum. Ireland oh, sounds yes. amazing. It's nice. Even, just add that to my bucket list. Even went to Paris, Texas, and killed Kenny Ireland, so that was pretty good. But Colorado, you said it's Colorado. So tell me about Colorado. I went twice. I went to the, I went one year to the Stanley Hotel. We did the, we nice stayed place. there and did the uh, Halloween party, yeah. whatever they have there. Yeah. And we went walking around and I thought it was strange because we were walking up a hill somewhere or something. And I kept seeing these signs. It says, watch out for bears. I'm like, wait a minute. Are there bears out here? So we didn't walk very far. So we went the, back. There, then, there are bears out there. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah, let's go back. And then we went back again to uh, I don't know, somewhere else. But they took us. The scariest part of being in Colorado for me is I got so high on this mountain. Because this guy <laughs> took us on a tour. <laughs> Got to clarify that. Yeah. Took us on a tour. And we're winding up this mountain. And this guy's driving us this big open Jeep thing with... Right on, I'm sitting on this side, so the cliff's right here. Right. And he's flying up this mountain, and he's like this, talking to us the whole time, looking back, talking to the people. I'm like, man, you're <laughs> you're on the edge. We're right. way up here. In the... So, Watch yeah. where you're going, son. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh my, get me off of this ride. Right. I didn't want to do that. But it was, it was neat. I liked it. Yeah. This is a neat place. It was neat. We go in the summer when it's not cold, because I don't do the cold. Yeah. I go a lot. I go probably every couple months, but... I got my taste of the cold a couple months ago. I'm done. Right. I'm right, done for a while. Right. That was enough for us Texans for the next 10 years. Oh, yeah. More than, more than that, I don't want to see cold ever again. <laughs> it was so weird because I was out there breaking breaking the, the pools. I had the, uh, an axe out there, and I was chopping the water. And when I chopped the water, it would splash back on me. It would freeze to me instantly. Right. And that was so crazy because I've never seen that before. And then I went into the barn. I got a Gatorade out of, the, out of the fridge in the barn, and I walked outside, and it froze. I was like, "What? What is going on? What is this?" And then I got to thinking, people live in this. Yeah, those cowboys up there in North Dakota, and you know, Colorado and Wyoming, where the wind never stops. And man, those, those guys, what they do, they do, and they oh, go no. through to put food on the table. Yeah, much respect to those guys. Oh yeah, they just laughing at ranch, me. Ranch, ranch, <laughs> ranching's hard as it is, but. Yeah. Up there, when sometimes it's negative thirties, and they're out there finding a stray cat. I, I don't, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, they're just laughing at me. Uh -huh, look at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing? Yeah, I was froze. It's even worse cutting the, uh, trying to cut the train off a round bell because it's froze to it. Yeah. And so you cut it, and you're pulling off, and then all the ice is falling off. Uh, it was cold. I don't, I don't want to be that cold ever again. <laughs> Ever again. It's too cold for Texas. Way too cold. So what I want to do, I want to thank Holly for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hanging out, talking about awards, talking about stuff, reading stories, doing things. But what we're going to do now is get on the highways and byways of Dallas and get out of town. It's time to go. Yeah.